Hello, my friends. Welcome to my channel and um, part one today of Rowan, my my uh, newest coloring page in my Etsy shop. So um, this is the medium. No, I take that back. This is the light grayscale version of this page, and it is printed on the Spring Hill Digital 90 pound cardstock. You know, it's funny because I was looking at the, the pound weight of this cardstock and they're, you know, they're calling it a 90 pound, which to me is a really heavy cardstock. Um, the other cardstock I used to use was 110 and it was like, you know, card. This is not that heavy. Um, so I know that um, with paper, there's some weird it's not just the, it's the GSM, I think, that's more important than the pound. Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, I know it says it's 90 pound, but truly this will go through any printer. Um, it's, it's not heavy at all. So um, I was, I just thought that that was kind of odd that it called itself a 90 pound and yet it, um, it really feels a lot, a lot um, thinner than that. So as always, I'm going to start on her skin. Um, that's a habit that I started when I first began coloring um, because, you know, when you're first learning how to do something, you always, well, I do, I always want to do it first just to make sure that um, I don't go through the whole page and then mess it up. But um, I still prefer to do the skin first. Um, so why change what works? <laughs> so. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to um, start out using Prismas, but if I feel um, the necessity to break out my luminance, I may do that. So I warned you guys ahead of time in some other videos <laughs> that um, it is very possible that I would be doing some luminance pencils in amongst um, my Prismas, so. Um, I will try and give you a um, an alternative, um, at least down in the description box. Um, I did that on a previous video where I um, wrote next to the luminance color, the, um, the color that I would have picked if I was using Strictly Prismas. I'm not sure that I can think of it off the top of my head while I'm, I'm actually working on the page, but if you refer to the colors down in the description box below, if I do pull out luminance, um, I will tell you what colors um, that you could maybe try um, instead. All right, so um, because I'm working on white paper, I'm going to start with um, light peach get a little buffer layer of colored pencil on the page before I start putting any darker colors down. That method seems to work best for me. Um, so that's what we'll do. I was tr when I was trying to come up with a name for her, um, she looks like, you know, a goddess of, of the harvest or a goddess of, of autumn, you know, and I was kind of looking up all different kinds of different names and every name that I found that, um, kind of referenced that, um, the goddesses were all, um, the goddess that like the, the Greek and Roman goddesses of the harvest and of, of, um, uh, you know, nature and all. They were all like mean goddesses. <laughs> like, I, it was like, oh, yeah, nope, not using that name. Nope, not doing the Queen of the Underworld. Nope, not doing. <laughs> so I finally settled on Rowan because um, she just seemed like a Rowan. And now I guess. I guess the name Rowan started out as a male name, kind of a, a, a Gaelic male name, and now it's it's kind of grown into uh, a unisex name. Um, I really like it as as a girl's name, actually, better than a boy's name. 
So, that's what I did. She kind of feels like uh, the end of summer and the beginning of fall to me because she's, she's kind of, uh, I don't know, she still kind of has a summery feel to her to me as well. So I thought it would be a good page to do now in early, early fall. It's still hot here, but... We like to dream of cooler temps. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and get through the entire um, skin tone today. So we're going to go ahead and get some of this all filled in as well. Her face is kind of small because of all the other stuff going on on here. So I think I'll be able to get the skin all done today. Try and remember to leave those highlighty bits alone. Stupid printer lines. <laughs> I hate them. Just hate them. Thankfully, nine times out of ten, I can cover most of them. So. I've been uh, working through my prismas that. I ordered, you know, online as opposed to uh, 
as opposed to uh, picking them out myself at the uh, at my local Dick Blick. I'm I'm pretty much not going to order them online <laughs> anymore. Um, I love them, and if I had to do that, I would still I would still do it because. I, can't, I just can't help but love them. Between those and the luminance, um, I just can't. I can't imagine doing what I do and not using Prismas to do it. But um, some of these that I have are, you know, off center in their cores, which is frustrating. So thankfully I can go pick out my own pencils. Okay. Let's switch to chestnut. When working on white paper, it's almost a um, it's almost a like a challenge for me to see how light of pressure I can put with my pencil, especially with the dark colors in the early in the early um, layering. They just I'm almost tempted to put this away and break out the peach. In fact, <clears throat> that is what I'm going to do. I just, um, on this white paper, those dark colors, <coughs> excuse me, they just take to it so strongly and I don't want to um, have to fight with the pencil stroke for blending. So let's do, we're going to build our, um, our darks. So let's do it this way.
So I'm only putting this uh, peach color down <clears throat> in the in the lightest part of the shadow. There's no need to put it up here because that's going to be the darkest part. We don't have to worry about that. Again, always lightening that pressure as I work into the lighter areas. It's really important. Let's break out the chestnut. Let's see if we can get a... I'm going to put a little bit really lightly in here because I want the bridge of her nose at the very top where her eyes are to recess further back and, that, and her nose to come forward so we can do that with shading. I know it looks funny now, but I think after I get... After I get everything blended, it'll look better.
Why do I have a line there? I have no idea. No idea where that line came from. Hopefully I can blend that out. I just... I suppose it's possible. Sometimes you get like uh, the pencil taking uh, taking to the paper uh, differently, depending on if there's a flaw on the paper or not. I don't know if that was the case or not. I don't remember putting a line there, but. Gently, gently. <clears throat> so before I get any further, um, I want to make sure there's this area here that I want to be extra light, like there's a, a good highlight, of a good bit of light shining right there. And so I'm going to put some white in there just to make sure that I don't, um, you know, accidentally go over that. I'm actually holding my arm muscles much um, more tightly than I'm holding my my fingers and my wrist. Um, I'm barely holding on to this pencil, keeping my pressure really light, but I can feel the tension in my arm as I'm um, trying to <laughs> keep it doing what I want it to do. But I noticed a lot of, um, especially, I don't know, recently on um, the Facebook groups, there's been, um, there's one group that seems to have more questions um, and answers about coloring than any of the other groups. Um, I think that one's called, can't remember, Coloring for Adults, I think. But anyway, there's been... Um, some questions lately on there about the um because people are talking about holding their their uh, pencils so tight and it hurting their fingers and i've showed you guys these before but i figured I might as well show them to you again these are um like little finger sleeves by this um, company called mutter <clears throat> they have all kinds of things on that in that site but what I really love about them, um, especially for times when I'm, if I feel like I've got a really bad lump going on my, th on my thumb, which occasionally I notice it more than other times, is that you can um, put these on your, on your fingers 
And then when you um, are holding the pencil, one, you don't hold it as tightly, maybe because it reminds you, like, like you're con consciously aware of the, um, of the pencil. I don't know. But it, um, it keeps that pencil from digging into your, into your um, finger so, so that you don't wind up with a big hard lump on your finger <laughs> like um, I have. And sometimes that it's, it goes down. It just depends on if I'm using um, them a lot. But what I like about them as opposed to, um, you know, those, those things that you put on the pencil to make the grip squishy and fat is that it's on your fingers and not on the pencil. So you don't have to keep changing the, um, you, don't, you don't have to keep changing it on the pencil. It's just on your fingers. And so you just pick up the, um, but I can say that um, using these right now, it definitely is helping me um, have a lighter touch um, and hold my pencil more lightly, uh, more loosely. If that was an issue for me, or if that is an issue for you, I, um, I think I would probably recommend that you try these. The, the black one is bigger than the blue one. You get a set of a, a bunch of them, um, but the black ones are bigger. So the black one's perfect for the thumb and um, and the other one is good for your finger. The blue one is good for your finger. But in just putting those on and using those for that little while, it I could definitely tell that it was um, kind of helping and forcing me to use a lighter hand on um, the pages. So if you have that issue, um, that might be something for you to look into that, that would help you to train your um, brain and your hand and all that to um, lighten up your grip on your on your pencils. All right, let's get some dark in here. So I'm gonna um, use the sharper edge of my pencil right now up in here because I want to dig into the tooth and fill in that line where I had my printer, my printer line there. I want to try and um, cover that up better. <clears throat> Going into the tooth really helps. So I think that that helps, that made a difference. Oh, <clears throat> I'll try and remember to put a link to these, um, to these down in the description box so it's easy for you guys to find them if you so desire okay more 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 let's do some trying to to study hands I've been um, you know just studying just studying hands looking at pictures looking at um, the way light falls and where it falls I don't always get it right, but I think I'm getting better.
<coughs> Excuse me. All right, we need a little bit of shadow under here. What's next? Mm. Um, let's put some, go ahead and put some pink on our cheeks, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with nectar. See, I'm glad I put that white in there. I, can, I don't know if it helped or not. I went over it too much. Let's just try and see. Hopefully I don't ruin it by... I really wanted <clears throat> some uh, highlight right there. So let's try and not screw that up again. <laughs> A little bit of nectar. I don't know, something about nectar. I just love it. It's such a good base color for so many things. Alright, let's put a little bit of pink. Really light because right in here there's hardly any pigment. And then that'll lighten up when we uh, blend and all that, I think. Um, let's go back to light peach and see what we get. We got a little bit heavier of a pressure now. Not, not heavy pressure, just, I'm not just doing it, um, with the lightest of touch like I do when I first start, kind of a, you know regular medium type pressure. I know it varies. Everybody's just, everybody's um, perception of what a light, medium, and a touch <laughs> is, is different. So it's hard for me to tell you exactly what my pressure is like, but
still trying to stay away from those highlights. So I'm trying to make sure that I have enough pigment on all of the areas so that when I go to blend, <clears throat> maybe with white, maybe with, uh, we'll probably add some eggshell before we blend with white. But you wanna make sure that you have enough pigment on the page before you start trying to blend and move those pigments around or else there's nothing there's nothing to blend there's nothing to move um, so <clears throat> while a light hand is important um, you want to make sure that you have <clears throat> lots of layers um, before you start blending a lot more <clears throat> pressure down on the lower part of her arm because there's a lot more pigment already down. Lightening up that um, pressure in the, in the center area where I want that highlight to be. Okay, I think I'm gonna add some beige. Um, <clears throat> and do it just like I would be adding a, a layer of anything. I wanna get some, some more golden tones in her skin. So pretty much everywhere except for the brightest highlight areas. work on this nose a little bit, trying to start to blend some of this I like what the um, what the beige is doing to her to the skin tone. It's definitely um, 
fixing some of that overly pink problem. We don't need it in here. I'm going to put a light coating of it on the um, lightest part of her arm because I'm thinking I don't necessarily want that part to be white, white. So we'll give it a little golden. And I think I'm going to come back in and darken my um, my darks before I blend as well. Um, so let's do some. Maybe we should start adding some purples in here. Um, okay, don't, do, don't follow along with me yet. I'm not sure if this is what I want to do yet. I might do that after. Um, so why can't I pick up the right pencil? <laughs> There we go, chestnut. Let's go back to, to some more chestnut. blend out. I didn't press down too hard, so it should be okay. I think I'm going to uh, blend with white, I think, and then come back and warm it all up with some burnt ochre. That seems to work pretty well.
think I'm just going to go straight for the um, black grape in here. We need a little bit more pigment in under here. Going to add a coat of white. Not sure if I'm going to call this blending with white. I'm going to start in the highlight areas that I want to stay really bright and I'm going to work my way out. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and, and blend with this. Um, I am, however, going to put less of it in the really dark areas because I don't really want to lighten those areas. We can blend those with a, with a uh, colorless blender. So white in the areas that I want to be the brightest and working my way out from there. This didn't work exactly the way I wanted it to, but oh well. Let me get my brush and do things properly. This is working just fine. Come in and work that nose a little bit more with some some more shaping a little bit I think it needs. I'm not going to put any white in here. It's not necessary. Um, that I'm going to put some peach.
<clears throat> I'm not going to bother putting white down in here. I don't want that to be lighter. Um, okay, so I want some burnt ochre. <laughs> A little burnt ochre. I think it might be time to pull out another one. All right, so I'm going to use this to try and warm up some of these. Because we kind of we kind of got it to I don't know, too light, too, we took away all the warmth in the skin. So I'm going to add this back in. Working on the side of my pencil because it's such a sharp pencil. I don't want to put any heavy pencil strokes on here. All right, let's see if I can do something with this nose. Um, we need a little bit more. Shading on this side of her nose to start with. the nostrils in because sometimes that really can help feels a little bit better. All right, back to adding some of the warmth back in her face. really want to start using this pencil the right way. So I'm going to um, just take a scrap piece of paper. And now I can come in here and start using it the, the way I would prefer instead of on its edge like that. Still have a little bit of um, pencil strokes happening, but I think they'll blend out pretty quickly. So 
So I want to go pretty warm on the underside because the pumpkin is um, orange and is going to kind of bounce that color, that reflection back up underneath. So we'll just go nice and warm in here. Do some grayed lavender. I think I want some more pink on her face right now before I go too much further. We're getting there. <laughs> it's all just kind of a, there's no set um, way. I, don't, I just kind of pick colors as I, as I look at it and see, oh, she, you know, this is what she needs. So because she's a kind of an autumn page, I want to get even a little bit more of the golden tones in her skin here. But not everywhere, because eggshell seems to be a more, little more intense of a yellow than the beige. So I'm just kind of placing it. enough there. We'll do some down here. I need to figure out what, what I'm going to do there in the middle of her arm. I have hardly any pigment there. Um, so I better fix that. I like that it looks um, bright, but it might be a little bit too bright. So let me add a little bit more light peach on here. Work my way into that. It's a little bit better, some more eggshell. Maybe some right down here because there would be a little bit of a reflection there too. I'm debating. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
There's something about her nose that's bugging me and I don't know what it is. I think I made this side too big. Um, not that it's, you know, really a huge big deal. I don't know how to... I'm going to try <sighs> some sienna brown. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm. Hopefully, I'm not making it worse. <laughs> the problem is that. I'm, I'm envisioning my light source coming from kind of, you know, in front of her, but more on this side of, of her um, face. And so to me, this, this would be a little bit more in shadow. This would have the most light. Um, so I'm probably just making it all worse by continuing to add more dark color. Let's try and blend this out and see. Yeah, that's better. Um, but I don't think that there's enough dark going on here. So I'm gonna put a little more chestnut underneath. I'm going to put a little more shadow. Under here. Do some black grape because I just because I like it <laughs> for no other reason than because I like it. not make unnecessary marks on the paper. I'm going to put a little bit right there. A little bit in there. Alright, I need to stop with the black grape, I think. <laughs> I think I'm going to blend now with a colorless blender. I think it's time. I might regret that decision. We're about to find out. All right, colorless blender, here we go. And now I didn't put any color up there, so I'm going to choose, I'm gonna choose white. Oh, I'm going to choose <laughs> eggshell.
think these crumbly bits are probably the colorless blender more than the colored pencil. I can feel the areas that don't have enough pencil on them as I use this. All right. Let's do some eyes and lips and then we'll um, we'll keep working the Skin if needed. I'm just going to throw some white here on the tips. Not that I probably need to, but I'm going to. I'm going to give her some pink. So I am going to go ahead and put some white in here to start. I want to make sure that I keep that nice and white. And maybe just a tiny little, little uh, bit in here. Okay, as always, nectar. <laughs> For my base. It's amazing to me how um, better the skin looks once her lips aren't gray anymore. <laughs> Need to blend that area right there. Boy, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot tell you how many times I'm looking for something and it's it's right in front of my face and I just continue to overlook it. It's, all right, let's do some mahogany red.
I always kind of start in this in the lower on the lower part of the upper lip the upper part of the lower lip you know right where they meet um, is usually dark in the corners then underneath the lower lip I actually think pink looks really nice with um, the reds and the oranges, so I'm going to put a little bit of pink in here. Maybe not. Maybe nectar. A little bit of pink was okay, I guess. That just looked really bright to me for some reason. Go back to the pink again. Just I'm just glazing some of this color on here. I don't I don't want it to be really super duper hot pink bright. And then the white is probably gonna lighten that pink up a little bit as well. Okay, well that's not too bad. Let's um, maybe some more. I'm gonna try this peach. Pink and orange just always seem to look really nice together. I like that. We're gonna go with that bit more white. Maybe this is one of those cases when I wish I the thing I don't like about working on white paper is that you have to know exactly what you want to do a hundred percent before you start putting color down and so like I decided, hmm, I want a little ridge of white there. Well, too bad. You you you're I'm, I'm out of luck because white doesn't show up on white paper on top of most colored pencil. So now if I want any more white any there anywhere there on the lip, I have to um I have to use a like a pen, a paint pen, and I don't like, other than for like little dots and highlights, I don't like using um, pens, paint pens. Just don't. All right, I want a little bit more shadow under her lip. The chestnut did not seem to work very well. I don't know what to use because I don't think I want black grape. I think that's that would be too dark. Maybe I better just try chestnut again. Something about it I didn't like, but shadow right in here. Looks 
better. All right, we'll do eyes. So as I blend this a little bit. This is beige. It's not as, um, you know, bright white as white. That worked out just fine. All right, how am I feeling? Uh, how am I feeling about this? Not too bad. I, uh... Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, let's... Let's move on to eyes, and then we'll probably be done, I think, for the most part. Not sure about in here. I kind of feel like I, uh... I know I keep bouncing around back and forth with what I'm doing. I'm sorry. That's what happens when I'm, that's what, what I do when I'm working alone. I see, I see something and go, ooh, I gotta fix that. Ooh, gotta fix that. That's... Um, yeah, so. I'm trying to work with white, you guys. I really am, but it's not my favorite. Um, and I don't know what to do because I really just want to work on tan. <laughs> um, or um, I'm, I'm starting to, to get used to working with that... Um, well, I shouldn't say I'm starting to get used to. I'm trying to get used to and get better at working with the toned tan, the Strathmore toned tan, which might be easier for you guys to get. Um, I know when Mona, Monia Mitchell Gates does her tutorials, she only works on her favorite paper. And I, I <laughs> I kind of feel like that's what I want to do is just switch to my own favorite papers. But then I feel bad because I know not everybody uses tan paper. So, okay, so I put a little bit of just a touch of black in there. And, um,. I may be putting just a touch of it in some of these pretty heavy shadowy areas. My um, Spira Farben Black works really nice for that because it's a it's a brown black as opposed to a gray uh, neutral black like a prisma black. So it works pretty well for um, shadows on uh, skin and stuff. Okay, I'm, um, I am going to get to the eyes, I promise. I just want to, so there's some, some minor little details like these creases that are in the hand. I guess that's not too bad. Um, so there's, <clears throat> there's these areas over here on the back of her arm, the elbow, that I think needs some more work. Um, I'm not going to do it for very long here on film because I don't I think you guys can figure it out. Um, if, you're, if your grayscale is still showing back here, um, that means that there's not enough pigment down and you might want to add some more. Um, go with the redder tones like your chestnut. I'm blending with the peach. So 
so that's good enough for now. <clears throat> Let's do the eyes. Okay. So I'm gonna want her to have green eyes. So I'm going to put some pale sage. Nope, sorry, sage green light. And the bottom part of the iris. And then I'm going to use kelp green. Sharp pencil helps a lot. Helps you get into those little Tiny bits. Go with fifty per cent cool gray. Just a little bit in the corners of the eye, underneath the um, eyelashes. And then I think we'll use 10% cool gray instead of white. Blending that into the white of the eye. All right, nectar and maybe henna. chestnut. Where's my henna? I've got mahogany. There, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Nectar. I think we're going to use Posca pen for our highlights on this. I just, it's, it's just too hard to try and um, preserve them on this tiny little page. If you are good at that, then by all means do that, but I am not good at that. I definitely like working um, bigger. I can tell you that. Doing the um, doing those eye studies nice and big. God, they were so much fun. I want to do some more of those. It's so, it's so fun to really be able to get in there and do a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to get some grayed lavender real quick, and I'm going to put it underneath her eye. This one, too. That's better. Okay, some pink. Do I want pink? Is that too bright? Um, let's... 
Let me just see if pink is too bright. I want to pink up just a touch this corner. Nope, I think pink is fine. We're going so lightly. Just, just a little bit. And then maybe along the water line. Okay, anything else I want to do? Let's do some black in the pupil, get that a little darker. And um, pretty much whether um, I'm doing a blonde or a redhead or a brunette, I almost always do dark um, lashes and dark eyeliner. That's I'm going to just very lightly um, give her some sh uh, liner, I guess. Darken that lash line. All right, eyelashes. Sharp pencil. Curve them. That one might have been a little bit too long, but I'm not going to worry about it. They're always shorter at the near the corner of the eye. Finer, shorter. make her nostril a little bit bigger. And we need some more, I don't know, something, some more definition. So this is um, burnt ochre. something about her that's just not quite right for me yet but I don't I don't know what it is um, but sometimes I have to sit with something for a little while and play you know until I figure out what I don't like um, let me get my paint pen out She's not bad, don't get me wrong. I'm not unhappy. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of Sometimes if you touch it, you know, while it's wet, you can soften that hard, bright that you get, but still keep the highlight. <laughs> that's that's all right. That's not bad. Um, she needs a little brighter highlight on the nose. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit right this actually is my, um, now that I realize, this is my whole bean soft white. Um, 
which is a softer white than Prisma. And so it, um, it does tend to show up better and to brighten and lighten things better, but it's also much softer and creamier, so it's generally harder to go over it once you got it on here. So um, just, you know, if you don't have it, just use your, um, your prism white. All right, she's still not shaded enough under her chin. But I think I'm going to end the video very soon because we're over an hour and a half. Really, she's she's not bad. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with her, I guess. Um, especially, especially for working on white paper. You know, when I work on white paper, I have to work either much more slowly or like when I did the original, I worked a lot more slowly. is burnt ochre. I'm wondering what about some mineral orange. Let me just try some mineral orange. Her hair is going to be very orange um, we're not doing we're not doing like you know auburn hair on her or anything we're gonna do full-on ginger orange hair so some of this mineral orange in her face actually i think is gonna work really nicely actually quite like it. I'm not sure if it shows up like really obnoxious on the, when I look through the viewfinder, it's like, woo, boy, howdy, that is orange. Um, but it doesn't look quite that, that bright in person. All right, guys, I think, um, you know, this is pretty much it at this point. If I do anything, it's just me tweaking and um, maybe adding a few more layers here and there. But the colors are all going to be the same. I'm not going to use any different colors that I than I used through the video. So hopefully you'll be able to, you know, continue on on your own if you feel that it's necessary. I don't think I missed anything major. I feel like I could work on her again for quite a while longer, but I like that um, that extra little bit of orange in her skin. I'm actually that actually makes me a lot happier. So, yay! I can end um, this one on a um, on a good note, on a high note, instead of not liking what we've done. <laughs> so. Um, I will be back soon um, to continue on. And um, until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love to you all. Happy coloring. Bye-bye.